Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop, and I'm back with another video today, specifically an unboxing video for a model that we've been anxiously awaiting for in the trombone shop, specifically the new Bach Artisan A47 XPS Peter Steiner model. So uh, you may have seen the video I did with this model a few weeks ago at Midwest Clinic. Um, that was the first opportunity I had a chance to put hands on it. And of course, we've been hearing about this model since, frankly, about this time last year, and then it was officially announced in June. But this is the first one that we've actually had in the shop. And so when it came into our warehouse, I said, oh, I'm going to grab it right away and do an unbox in video so this is obviously the box that it comes in here um it, really interesting each of our manufacturers kind of have different boxes they use and so right away when i'm checking in oh, what do we have coming in today i you know what the box is can give me an indication and then i always look for the label and right away when i saw the a47 xps i said oh boy okay now we are ready to roll here so i am gonna grab my handy dandy jack knife and we are gonna open this up and see what is inside All right, so here we've got inside the box. So one of the things we are finding more and more is that a lot of our manufacturers are using, instead of the old foam peanuts or some other things, a lot of them are using this type of brown craft paper. And frankly, this is what we use in the shop and actually all of our specialty shops um, to pack instrument cases once they are ready to be boxed up. Um, I really, really like this. Not only is it more environmentally friendly than some of these, other, you know, the peanut options or some, or bubble wrap. Um, but I think it actually does a better job as well. I like that I can really cushion the case inside the box, um, really kind of control the stiffness of, you know, how protected it is and really suspend it in place because that's really the goal when we are shipping instruments is really trying to suspend them as much as possible, trying to prevent, obviously, any impacts. Um, and I think this type of craft paper rolled up like this does a really nice job of that. So I'm going to work on pulling some of this out here. And we are going to pull out the case. All right, got it. So this is my first real look at the Peter Steiner case here. And, and we're going to work on getting some of this wrapping off of here. You know, I think some of us have seen the videos um, in all of the great social media that Peter has done with this here, but getting to really see the case in person the first time, I am really impressed. I did have a chance to talk with Bach and with Jason Smith, who is their um, low brass product manager at Midwest, um, and he was talking about the case and the case development and everything, and one of the things he said is, you know, when we were going through and trying to create a cut bell case for this very unique model, we said, well, you know, we can try to recreate this or we can go to somebody who already has really great experience in making, you know, gig bag, you know, cut bell kind of cases. In this case, guard bags. And frankly, we're seeing more of this as well, whether it's Bach, you know, using... You know, some different established makers out there. SE Shires, of course, last year made the move uh, to use all Marcus Bona cases, um, as well as a number of others. Courtois has been using BAM cases for a lot of years, and now they're using Marcus Bona. Um, Hans Hoyer Horns and a number of other makers have been using uh, uh, the Marcus Bona as well. And so I kind of like that in a way. It's kind of a realization that, hey, we have a specialization. We make really great instruments. Let's go to somebody else who has a real specialization in making really great cases and collaborate on that. Okay, so here is the case. So again, this is one of the concepts with these cut bell designs are the portability, you know, the compactness of it. Um, there are other, other benefits, uh, and you can certainly hear some of the other videos I've done talking about what I think about what, you know, cut bells do to how the instruments play, but that portability is certainly part of it, and I do really, really like this case design. So we've got, obviously, the external slide pouch here. Um, so this does feel it's kind of a quasi hard case. And so talking with uh, Jason Smith when they were developing this with Guard, they went through a few different iterations. Um, in particular with the slide compartment, they've added extra 
um, you know, stiffening materials along here to really make sure that the slide is nice and protected. And of course, I'll pop that open in a second. And then really the same thing here um, with the actual bell compartment here as well is that it is, you know, semi-stiffened. Um, I So it's kind of in between a hard case um, not quite as stiff as like a Marcus Bona, but definitely has some stiffening with it. You know, and a lot of little features. I really like, you know, what they've done with the backpack here. Um, this has been a really popular option. A lot of folks have been doing, have been doing kind of the, the, the hidden uh, backpack straps. So if you don't want to be using them, you don't have to, but they are right there if you need to have them. Um, I really like the handles as well. Both the handles, both the top handle and what I refer to like the subway handle here as well, I think is really, really well done. One other feature I really like about the case right off the bat is that you can detach the slide compartment here with this zipper right here. So there's a few different ways to do this. I know a few makers who do more of kind of like a strap that goes behind here, um, which is great, but sometimes those are actually really hard to get on and off. And part of the idea with having this removable is that if you are flying in a smaller plane, so something like this is likely going to fit into the overhead of like a 737 or something bigger than that. But if you are on a smaller plane, you know, sometimes the overhead is just not long enough. Width-wise, I think you're probably okay, but the length could be an issue. And so the idea here is, great, remove the slide compartment off of the main case here, stick this up in the uh, the overhead compartment, take this and just slide it right underneath your seat. Um, and so, like I said, the ability to do that quickly, I think is really helpful. And so I actually really like this innovation here. But now, of course, we want to see inside as well. So. I'm going to open up the slide compartment here first so that we can see. And of course, very often, as you can see here, typically when we have slides arriving from makers, they do uh, come wrapped up here. So I'm actually going to flip this around like so here so we can finish unzipping it. Good. And I do like I do like that the compartment actually comes all the way open. It's a, it's a little thing, but sometimes, I mean, depending on where you're unpacking your horn, it can be a little bit difficult to really be able to, you know, get the slide in easily without having to put stuff down. And so with this cover actually coming all the way down here, it does give us a little bit different access, which is really nice. Now, you may have noticed a couple things here. We've got some pads right here, and we've got the leak pipe storage right here as well. Um, one of the things, of course, they've done with the new Artisans is they've got a, a brand new um, hand slide setup, brand new lead pipe setups as well. And again, I really like that storage area as well. So there, of course, we've got the hand slide here. So I am, let's go ahead and get the hand slide unpacked. So Right away, I mean, a couple things I know. So one of the things with Bach, um, Bach and Khan, they always um, put a tie around the hand slide just to make sure that if for some reason the slide lock comes undone, something like that, that the hand slide is staying together where we don't have to worry about it coming out, causing any issues. Or frankly, if somebody picks it up and they're not aware, the outer hand slide falls off. So it's one of those little details. Sometimes when I'm unpacking a lot of horns, it's slightly annoying, but frankly, it's a really great idea. Got it. So, and so here is our A4747 hand slide here. So, of course, the signer has just a standard 547 hand slide. Um, they do have a number of other options, including, um, I believe that they are working on maybe a straight 562 hand slide for the Artisan series. We'll see where that goes there. And, of course, we've got the removable lead pipes here. Um, they include three here. The one that is in it is the standard 47 hand pipe. Um, it's good. I like that the, the threading feels good. It's a little stiff. A lot of times they are, and frankly, I would prefer a little stiff than a little loose. That makes sure that it has a little bit better connection with the uh, cork barrel and the receiver here. Good, so good. So that's the hand slide. I'm actually gonna put this back inside the case here, and then we are gonna go open up the bell section. All right, good, so I'm gonna open up the bell section here. So for this, we are going to unzip here. <laughs> around the other way here. Mm 
Good, and we're gonna open it on up there. So again, I really like that the whole cover opens up here. So again, we have easier access. There are a lot of really great cases out there. One of the few annoyances I have a lot of with a lot of them is that with the, the way they secure the top of the case, um, and you know, a lot of them, they don't want to plop them all the way open, but what it means a lot of times is that they're unbalanced. They like to tip away from you. And sometimes you have to do a few contortions to really get everything kind of the, to, you know, balance. You can actually get your horn in. So I, I like that, that we have everything that opens up there. And then of course we've got our, bell section here um we've got some uh, desiccant gel a lot of makers put those in there just to help prevent any moisture from building up a side especially if they're going to be stored for any period of time so i would appreciate seeing that and of course just like we talked about they do a you know real nice job kind of keeping everything wrapped up keep things protected there so we're going to unwrap the bell section as well here So whenever I'm unwrapping here, always making sure I keep a nice positive grip on, you know, the horn inside the bag. The worst thing I could do is actually drop a horn as we're doing this. Perfect. And here is our bell section. So one thing I noticed, and this is something that Jason Smith actually mentioned to me here, is that with this brand new X-Wrap that they have going on, uh, one of the few concerns that people have brought to their attention is the fact that this leg of the tubing is quite close to the bell. Now, of course, there are you know very good reasons why you would not want to put bracing here, um, especially with this being this far down, I could see it having an impact on how the bell resonates. So what he said, they, he mentioned this to me, he said they have been putting this foam piece right here to help protect it during shipping in particular. Um, so that way the tubing doesn't, you know, you don't have something happen and the tubing doesn't bend a little bit and impact the bell there. So we're gonna pull that right out. And as you can see, that is a pretty tight clearance in there. So I understand that again, you know, attention to the little details there. And then here, of course, we've got all of the, the wonderful engraving. They've done a really nice job. Frankly, in the last handful of years, they've really kind of upgraded their engraving game a little bit. I really like the engraving on the brand new uh, 88 H and V as well. I think that's really, really well done here. Good. And then of course we still have to unwrap the uh, bell flare as well. Good. Now one note with the case I really like here, um, there have been you know, a number of different setups that we've done for the detachable um, bell cases. And I really like that we've got this cone right here that the bell stem fits right into. Some of them sit loose. And if you have everything secured and padded, um, that's just fine there. But I do appreciate that we have that cone there just to kind of help give a little bit extra protection, extra protection, help everything to lock into place. Kind of a nice little feature there again. We're gonna finally do the flare here. Got it. So in talking again with Bach, they've tried a number of different things with the kind of the bell flare setup. So what they have right now is that this is on a kind of basically a Velcro hinge. Um, so that way you can kind of just lift it up and then you can access the flare. And I think that works out fine here. And again, once again, we've got everything wrapped up here. I think I can do this one handed. There we go. Perfect. Good. And I was really impressed when I did get a chance to put hands on this model at uh, Midwest a couple of weeks ago. I was really impressed with uh, what I saw with the collars. I thought the collars were really nicely done. Um, you know, obviously it's not a new technology. Horns have been using this for years and years, but it is encouraging to see uh, trombone makers really taking what the horn world has learned here and making sure that we're building nice, secure collars. Don't have to worry about any cross threading or any of that. And so I thought that they did a really nice job with that. Um, and somebody had mentioned, you know, too, um, that with the, uh, with the cut bells here, um, they do start off as one piece bells. Um, there was a little confusion about that, but this is a, a you know, a full on, I mean, you know, traditional box style bell. So one piece bell, um, that after they spin the bell and, you know, form it and everything, then they go back and they cut it and do the collars and everything with it. And so it's interesting. And I, I could feel that, you know, there's a difference with that versus some other setups where maybe they start off as two piece bells. This still had a lot of that Bach 
feel to it. Um, the you know that 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 ring, that special timbre that we had there, but just with some modifications, with some additions, with the the collar and what that did to the sound, to the response here as well. All right, and so here we have the horn all put together here. So. Again, kind of you know, what I've seen certainly with the Artisan models in the past and what I experienced in Midwest here, just a beautifully built instrument. So again, we've got this lovely engraving, you know, happening here. Um, and the collar, I really like the shape of the collar. Got a little bit of, a little bit different profile than some of the other cut bell collars on there. How will that affect how it plays? Well, I'll do a more kind of in-depth review here coming up. Um, but of course, we've got that really unique X wrap happening here. Uh, really nice engraving on the valve cap. Um, the brand new paddles that they've been using on both this and on the new uh, vintage uh, Con 88H um, that you know really like. Uh, people have been really liking that contoured setup. So I think great job with that there. Um, so overall, a beautiful horn. Yeah, really, really exciting. So, of course, you can keep an eye out. I'll be doing a full review of the horn, how it plays, what the experience is, you know, in the coming, hopefully, coming weeks here. But, as always, if you have any questions, thoughts about what I talked about, questions about the Peter Stein or some of the other artisan models out there, if you have experience with this model or some of the other cut bell models, feel free to leave those questions in the comments. Feel free to share them with our community. We'd love to have that interaction. Of course, while you're there, um, think about giving this video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. And check us out on Facebook and Instagram. So thank you very much for watching.